Hello, and welcome to the 2017 Dawn of War Warham Fest Extraction. <laughs> My name is Angry Crow. I will be your caster this afternoon, and we'll be covering the round two, game two skirmish of Death by Snails versus our very own Mehmed, who's incredibly long name I can barely remember. <coughs> Death by Snails versus Mem. Here we go. Dread Peak. Four player match. Imperial Guard this time versus Chaos. Uh, Mem changing armies quite often. Let's see how um, Death by Snails opens up this game. I'm going to look at the Fog of War really quickly. As we can see, Death by Snails is in this kind of southwestern quadrant where it appears that Memage is going to be hanging out just across the map, just across the way. Now in the middle of the map, there is a little bit of a hill, but a very interesting control point. And this critical location will give the army the opportunity, the chance to build more units more quickly. <laughs> Imperial Guard is a pretty big deal. Um, here's their field command immediately opening up to infantry command, just getting as many units out as possible. Guardsmen are pretty light units in comparison to a lot of the other uh, armies that we've seen Mamich open up with. So instead of having a couple of scouts in the Space Marines or a couple of stealth suits or even just like a grip of Necron warriors, we're going to see a whole group of these guys just out there in the field, you know, chasing down the future. Imagine a bunch of little Halo guys just going out and killing. Right away you can see we have a Tech Priest Engineer on the table. When Tech Priest can actually get a couple of more units out there, can actually build listening posts and upgrade these slag deposits um, to get a little bit more map control. And I can see that these Scoutsmen acting as Scouts, which as you can see down here, are not very strong. Their range damage and melee damage being less than 30 um, is actually not going to do a whole lot. And it should be a pretty good match compared to the pure onslaught of the Tau firepower that we had seen previously. So the Heretic is going to straight up try and build up the resources a little bit faster with a pretty good rate coming in of about 38. Um, but they need to get spent. So we have a Chaos Temple. That's ready to go. And we also have another detachment of cultists out here just trying to get control points and also make sure that they have resources first. Make sure that you're ready to go before you get out there and you get kills before you get those bodies. So we're controlling a bunch of points at once, and things are looking pretty good. There's already, like I said, strength in numbers. Numbers in Warhammer are a little bit um, misleading. To have an overwhelming force of units, um, you really need to match weapon types against each other. You really need to match characteristics of those units. So I can see that the basic attack of these pretty affordable units here, the Imperial Guardsmen, is nothing compared to the Chaos Space Marines. They are quite, quite powerful. There is almost no comparison. A cultist is much more like it, but still a much stronger unit. And maybe two units of cultists can probably pretty handily beat a grip of Imperial Guardsmen. So I'm just going to want to try and keep these guys populated as best as pos possible. Because even running into, well, maybe not this small of a size, we're running into anything much bigger <laughs> than a group of four cultists is going to mean trouble for his detachment. So it appears that Death by Snails is going to be adding up units very quickly after the last round. Understanding that the strength of the cultists is their numbers, we're going to get a bunch of them in and we're going to back them up, kind of mimicking the Tau. Back them up with Chaos Space, machine, space Marines, which are very, very powerful. Now, Death by Snails also has a pretty good awareness of the map at this point, whereas Memage has his side of the map under control. Oh, and it appears that we have our first conflict. And here's what I'm talking about. The Imperialists, uh, Imperial Guardsmen, trying to put these cultists in their place. They definitely outrange those cultists, and that's going to cause a lot of problems because you couldn't get in there and actually distract them. Um, not enough people. But now Death by Snails knows where the conflict is where the threat is, um, and may be able, if we look at our map, to see, oh, there's a follow-up attack, yes. So the support might be under or underwhelming. 
as well as this unit over here, which is actually out in the open. But we'll see this very, very large force start to congeal. Um, if we look at Death by Snail's camp, uh, here we go. Is this, why aren't you, oh, it's you. There you are. Yeah. You can see these cultists move. We want them to kind of get back into the fold of, like, let's control this huge point on the map. Oh, but they can't. As they walk right into an imperialist trap, this heavy turret is taking down anyone who dare try and take over this section of the map, this critical location. It will not take a while longer to capture them, and so Death by Snails is mobilizing as many cultists as possible just to support that unit. Uh, now, will they bring along these Chaos Space Marines? I'm not sure. But all Memich has to work with right now are Imperial Guardsmen, and it appears to be a commander. Well, a command squad, which is weird, because there are only a couple of them. Uh, I guess they just count as a squad. All right. Anyway, the command squad is going to give these remaining cultists a whole lot of trouble and proceed to take over this control point, if that is their drive, their interest. You cannot pull them off of their post. You cannot pull the guard away from their guard. That is what they do. They guard imperially. Death by Snails is regrouping um, with even less map visibility trying to determine what the biggest threat is and where to maybe best deploy their units. Death by Snails is snailing right through, collecting a few more. Ooh, a Chaos Lord. We're getting somewhere with this. So we're actually getting a stronger unit to back up our pretty good sized mass at this point of, of lighter attackers. So let's have a look at the tech side over here for the Imperial Guard. We actually don't see a lot of tech movement Oh, except for a plasma generator. Yeah, Memage is very much concerned with increasing a stable capacity so that he has options down the line if he needs to make a counterattack of what particular unit he would need. Um, right now he's been putting most of his resources into these um, installments just to have defense if he needs the time to run back from his two wings of battle. His one field that is over here in the southwest and again in the northeast a listening post that is defended by as much more set of a much more stronger set of units, and we can see that Death by Snails is just about ready to mobilize without really being aware of the threats that exist outside of their domain. However, with six out of ten units, it seems that those forces um, are going to have a hard time really taking control. So we're going to group everybody together. It looks like. And now we're going to try and push one wing of the Imperial Guard's army down. So let's follow these Chaos Space Marines for a minute. As we remove this control tower. You're going to attract the attention of the previous owner of that control tower. The Imperial Guard is now descending upon Death by Snail's camp. For a moment there, you can see with this fog of war, Death by Snails is showing up right here on the radar of Memage, opening up with, <laughs> with cultists. But is it enough to make a dent? They're sitting there, they're praying, they're trying to attack the strategic point instead of the units that are actually guarding that point, and that is going to get them killed. Chaos Space Marines show up on the scene. Much more powerful units, and you'll see these guys make a way bigger dent in the Imperial Guard's numbers, but they're surrounded on either side with pretty strong units, and almost enough to keep them away. Um, the Imperial Guard is focus firing each of these Chaos Space Marines separately and shutting down that offensive on the strategic point. Here come more cultists from down the hill. The, the Imperial Guard is very, very well matched. It's a nice variety of artillery and infantry. Death by Snails is going to have to do quite a bit more work in order to regain map control, or even maintain it in the first place. If we look at the Fog of War, you can see that Memich has the view of the map. You can see 
half of it clearly, knows pretty much what's going on. Doesn't want to draw too much attention by taking that relic out of the middle of the map. Um, but clearly he's in a position of power. He's got a very, very serious number of resources and he's going to start using these numbers in order to arm it, probably with more heavy artillery, heavy bolter cannons that are sitting at each of these control points. And that'll control the flow of where Death by Snails can actually make an assault in return. Because if you don't have enough units to take down this thing, you're not going to have enough units to push through, and that'll make you go around, you know? So here we have a couple more groups of cultists. We have a surviving, whoa, this is new, aspiring champion. If you're lucky, you might be a champion. And a Chaos Lord. We're going to need those commander units. Dawn of War works really well with variety. You want a combination of different units that are attacking another combination of units and kind of rock, paper, scissoring it from there, so to speak. And it looks like these cultists who have the strength of the upcoming champion behind them are going to engage with these commanding, with the command squad. So the command squad has a fantastic range background. I mean, the upgrades that this infantry has, heavy weapons upgrades, all three of them, and a full squad size. They're just kicking <laughs> death by snails <laughs> around the map. <laughs> and maybe even taking control, what is this, a heavy weapons team just deployed right there on the center of the map. If we turn the fog of war back on, you can see that death by snails is starting to get cornered. That half of the map is starting to turn into a third of the map. And we're just getting started, it looks like. Coming at about the halfway point of the match, Death by Snails is recharging um, with a small resource problem, um, not a lot of power. A lot of these Chaos units are going to take a little bit more power resource than the infantry of the opposition would. Um, and so that's going to start to stockpile. We switch over to Mamage's camp. The Imperial Guard has a pretty good balance. Oh, but we did just catch the building of Mechanized Command. Oh, great. So we're going to start to see some vehicles and some pretty big weapons <laughs> show up on this battlefield here in a second. Um, which is very, I don't know, it's a very hawk-like. It's a very good, very good looking day for a war. You know, great battles in front of us. Heavy Vulture turrets backing up. But notice, still not very interested in handling this critical location. Now there are all multiple ways to win in this game. You can control uh, many points past a certain amount of time. Total Annihilation seems to be the way that Mimich goes. I think that might be just because he's more experienced and he wants to give other players an opportunity to explore other aspects of the game. Um, although, you know, maybe maybe he was a champion in some other league. Us at the Hyper League can't say for sure. So, we have very, very many units, a whole lot of power, and this building should be done uh, well soon. I'd speed up the match a bit, but that wouldn't be any fun for anyone, right? You want to see this here first. It seems that he's allowing for some time for Death by Snail to summon something new. A heavy bolter turret, but it's cursed. So, from the warp, the heretic wishes and prays the heavy bolter turret from hell, literally, to show up piece by piece, like an Ikea delivery from Swedish hell. Built by hand from the ground up with a few Chaos Marines to kind of secure some extra points and get a little bit of that map visibility back. Um, what I really want to see going on right here is this heretic that is of course invisible. Just getting a little bit more out there, doing some extra work, putting out a couple of more listening posts or something to really fix this uh, resource issue that we're having. Uh, or maybe we're saving up for something big, I don't know. But it would appear that in round two, our players are getting a little bit more comfortable with the game. Um, getting used to managing a bunch of different units. Let's turn off that fog of war and see where this conflict's going to happen. As you can see, the Imperial Guard has taken over the center of the map. They have heavy guns installations along either wing. <laughs> and that's going to very much force Death by Snails to engage with the Imperial Guard head on. Mavage's Imperial Guard is not messing around, and I think given much more time or opportunity, will continue to ensnare and close their forces around 
the command or the Chaos Space Marines commanding operations. So you can see Death by Snails kind of tucking away a few units, uh, looking for just you know have a little pocket of safety, save a little bit of extra on the side. Uh, rainy day, cultists, Chaos Raptors finally in the game. Um, a bit stronger units higher morale, they need a commander to really make them work, and so we have a Chaos Lord hanging out with them. A very, very powerful commander in this game, actually. Um, but I can't see specifically what upgrades um, have been given to either of these units. I can just say that they have been upgraded. So we do have heavy weapons, and we do have a slightly growing squad, so Death by Snails could definitely benefit. Ooh, what's this? A minefield that's being attacked through a ramp from a heavy weapons team. That is a very specialized heavy weapons team. Have you heard of any bullets that can go through walls? Well, this assault is probably going to be very frustrating to death by snails, and so the heretic is going to continue to make a dent onto that construction. We need more plasma generators. Although we have collected enough resources to make some serious moves, don't have enough units up front to really put a dent in this force that is standing by. So let's have a look at what is probably coming out right about now. The Basilisk. <laughs> All right, the Basilisk Depot. So we're gonna upgrade our mechanized command unit. That'll give Mehmet an opportunity to make an even stronger unit, although I believe he's gonna have to wait just a few seconds or at least get the notification. There we go. That that upgrade is here. So now we can build the flying unit. I think. No, that's not what that thing does. That's the basilisk. <laughs> Look at him go. All right. What are we building now? Basilisk. This is a tank. We're building heavy artillery. Uh, much like the installations that we have here, specifically of this sort. Um, we're going to put a giant tank on a set of rails, a giant gun on a set of rails, a set of treads, and we're going to just use that as a driving force on what is starting to appear like a bunch of sitting ducks. Uh, Death by Snails is probably also looking for coffee at the moment. Um, but we do have a new facility, the Chaos Armory, but nothing really being produced right now. And that is gonna be really the tricky part as <laughs> that heavy artillery starts to take chips away. That's right, it has showed up, the Basilisk. Look at this thing, look at this ferocious, long-range tank of death. He spots you, and if he sits still, he got you. So we have to figure out exactly how to deal with that as these buildings start to take damage. Uh, plasma generator goes down. That is the only one that Death by Snails has, and so that is going to really put a bottleneck on the type of units that Death by Snails may produce. Um, but it seems that Death by Snails has just gotten back from checking their email, and they're trying to get the heck out of Dodge as the assault begins, but be careful because they are being scoped, they are being scouted, and they may not be aware of the terror that rests on the other side of this hill. Uh, looking for more unit production, and I'm really not seeing anything going on here. I'm just seeing rains of shells coming into these different rains, trying out different units, seeing what combinations kind of work, and, you know, do you really want the chaos, you know? They're definitely, certainly strong enough in numbers. Um, you could probably take out half of these forces with a well-organized attack, but it's gonna be very, very difficult to get up and close, up close and personal with them at this point, because there is a very, very well-entrenched heavy weapon <laughs> behind a cloud of units. Um, let's have a quick look at Mimic's resources. He's starting to stockpile over here be requisition resources because he's close to his unit cap. He can't really do much more. Um, maybe build something, but there's the, the thing about Dawn of War is it's very easy to get unit cap in this game. Um, and so a lot of the battles that take place would normally be around areas like this, where you would want to increase your unit cap. Um, right now, Death by Snails has... Wow, maybe I just missed this, but their forces have been hit by this large gun several times. As you can see, this blood splattered across the snowy battlefield. 
kind of just become aware of small little engagements, but his built in, his entrenched forces definitely pay it no mind. Which is this heavy, heavy artillery just destroys, rains down any kind of expansion the Death by Snails is trying to make. Um, this has become a war of attrition. <laughs> the aspiring champion was knocked away by the blast, the good 50 feet. <laughs> but that's okay. Get the heck those units out of there, the Chaos Lord. What are the remaining units in Death by Snails camp if I switch over to Death by Snails Z? You can see that the unit camp is hardly used. So what are we going to do? We need to produce more units. We need to keep up our defenses. We need to have something in place. And very much what is happening is trying to build something to take down this infantry that Death by Snails is probably unaware even exists. Just, you know, living the Syrian lifestyle of trying to have breakfast, but then the Imperial Guards artillery is taking your stuff out piece by piece. As another basilisk is populated and hanging out behind Memage's impressive front line of offense. Destruction and death rain down upon the Chaos Army. Very few resources left to really make a difference in this game. A whole bunch of cultist squads are starting to be built. But will they make it out before that building is destroyed as Memage's Imperial forces slowly advance into their spawning area? How many cultists will be shelled? How many will it take? Should we move our rally point elsewhere? I don't know. But I don't think the cultists can take too many of those hits. Here comes a squad, and then right again, just another deafening blow. A howitzer shell the size of a keg of beer, full of poisonous ants, <laughs> strikes down. Although Death by Snails moves their new cultists out of the way, we really need to move that rally point out over here so that we can make sure that our new units are not under such insane and unrelenting explosive assault from above. In an attempt to anticipate the crushing force, like as in the previous rounds where we were rushed by the Tau, it's a very, very strong offensive. You know, these sergeants and Imperial Guardsmen, these Imperial Guardsmen are not particularly strong units on their own, and the Imperial Guard really needs this heavy weaponry and grenades of explosives specifically to make a big dent in large numbered armies. Like, they can not really face the Aspiring Champion or some Chaos Space Marines. But Chaos Space Marines are very, very difficult to come by when you are resource locked like this. As you can see, the power resource is coming in at zero every turn. And that's going to limit very heavily the types of units that Death by Snails can produce at this time. That's going to mean a lot of cultist squads and even less time. And at this point, what do you do? Can you invest in more structures for building? Possibly. But it's going to cost you a lot of time, and that you may not have. Even though Memage's Imperial Guard is incredibly patient, sitting at the top of the hill, Let's have a look at what new tech is coming out of here. Uh, Karskin. No, Karskin? Kar... Kas... Ka Kasserkin. What are these guys about? Oh my goodness. Elite units. <laughs> Deal high damage and have long range. Can move more quickly than other infantry. They have much better attack power, especially at range, than the equivalent... Um, not priests, the Imperial Guards. As you can see, these guys... Well, now that they have been upgraded, are much more powerful. However, 18 to 22. Oh, let's talk about you. 20 to 24 as at range versus 65 to 75. So I don't know what's going on now, but I'm fairly certain Mimich has the kill squad. If I turn the fog of war back on, we can get a better sense of what's going on with our play. We actually have a small collection. It seems like the shells have stopped. Um. But the cultists are not exactly sure for what reason. It's just going. It's just going on. We're just surviving. We're trying to get out of here. We're trying to sneak right on through and build an advancement of heavy bolster turrets as really a way of securing 
these small resources that we have down here. So Death by Snail is going to get this heretic to travel around and find more opportunities for strengthening encampments and possibly even getting an opportunity to raise their power resource and change the units that are coming into the game. Looks like they have a conflict here as well. But that is more of the untapped minefield, um, not very much being affected by the growing and even more imposing force. Finally, we can replace a plasma generator and <laughs> an even larger force now with even more units. Ogren, oh my goodness, Ogren. Heavy infantry, very, 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 very strong close range. Um, and increasing in number. Look at these bald-headed grannies. They're pretty tough, half-human, half-ogre aliens that are pretty much humans but mutated to become the perfect meat market of death. Um, more force here than anyone really can deal with. My computer can barely deal with it, um, which is saying something. Though I imagine... Mimich is starting to lose control over this corner of the map, even though it can see half of it. He's not being distracted at all. Um, he has a force to be reckoned with, and he's not worried if, you know, holy crap, a Bane Blade <laughs> gets taken out, which is going to be a difficult thing to do with the amount of units that Death by Snails has to offer. I think Death by Snails has seen the Bane Blade and is trying to figure out how to deal with this monstrosity on wheels. Look at this weapon. Oh my goodness. There aren't very many other ultimate <laughs> weapons in the game that are as powerful as the Bane Blade. Uh, that's just pure destruction. Now the damage ramp of the Imperial Guard is pretty ridiculous. Um, starting out with the very very low units at the early game to being able to annihilate an entire unit of cultists in about one and a half shots, using three different cannons, just reclaiming listening posts left and right, without even moving his main force, just gonna take this big tank and just walk it all over the map like a mean dog, destroying and ravaging every single thing in its path. So, Chaos seems to be a little bit frozen by the disturbance in the force, and at the moment of this assault, Memich is mobilizing his gigantic infantry force downward into the southwestern corner of the map, actively engaging with death by snails. And this is quite <laughs> brutal. Um. <laughs> Here comes that long range infantry, or the heavy weapons units. Um, a little bit of damage is being done by these heavy bolter turrets that we have in the background. Backing up our cultists, giving them a couple of instances to stand. But that heavy artillery is just going to be rocking them straight out of the water, especially as this Bane Blade gets closer and closer to the base, pinching with heavy artillery from both sides. And these small units to kind of change the direction and focus down a couple of buildings. But really, the force is coming from this artillery range that is just annihilating the remaining structures of Death by Snails. And I can see why. I mean, there's definitely a, a, a lot of people who are new to real-time strategy games will hesitate because of the amount of time that it takes to get a bunch of units going. And you need to have a few units together in order to support them and kind of keep building your forces. And you're betting against whether or not I can keep these guys alive. Do I completely engage? Do I back off? You know, can I kind of drag them into another trap? Um, that is an ins insane amount of power. I'm just basically using every single unit that the Imperial Guard has with the exception of, like, <laughs> maybe one or two things I can't think of um to demonstrate just how ferocious not being aggressive in an RTS can be and i think that that is definitely how this cookie went this was round 2 so round 2 of 
2017's, uh, I guess, round two of this battle. Game two, round two, two out of three. This one also goes to Mimich, um, showing versatility and also a lot of patience, experimenting with new armies that maybe he hasn't played with in a while and giving his opponents a chance to really kind of explore and feel out the battlefield before completely steamrolling them with a gigantic tank. So let's have a quick look at the overview of the match. And you can see here, this is a very, very big difference. Um, the match went on a bit longer, but I would say that the ratio is about the same from other matches that I had seen. Um, more experienced player like Memage against Death by Snails or, another pl or other players that I had seen. It's about four times the efficiency overall. Um, Death by Snails did have a pretty good lead in technology, as in like placing down more turrets, um, but not really utilizing those resources. So you can see the resources that have been gathered, and the resources that have spent, and not really having an opportunity to spend anything really wisely. Now, Chaos took a lot of power um, resources, not requisition resources, um, and being able to secure these powered generators early on, especially for these like dark and undead and warp type um, armies, uh, it's going to be a very, very strong like asset to you, something that you have to defend a lot more than manpower, because those are the armies that are going to have a lot more strength in numbers, but very, very expensive tech, um, whereas the Imperial Guard is definitely the opposite. It takes a long time to get into the range of resources where their technology is absolutely devastating. So you can see not very much research going on here in Death by Snails and almost all research, like almost every unit that the Imperial Guard had was built by Mimage. Um, that was pretty intense. <coughs> now the score did even out to some, to some, to some extent, um, but it was those reinforcements that really made up those points. And really not playing defensively. Memage is always usually, or Memage is always defensive at first because he doesn't know where somebody is, um, and it would appear that Death by Snails and a lot of other beginning players are trying to figure out where to expand and how to have confidence in their army. And a pattern that I'm seeing so far is to stick together. You know, use your units together, have some teamwork. This has been a great match. I've been your host, Angry Crow. We're going to call it for now. This has been round two, game two of the Dawn of War Hyper League 40k Soulstorm Extravaganza, their tournament for 2017. Thank you so much for joining me. I'll see you soon.